know, at this stage of my life, I'm trying to do more pausing, more what I call installment moments, where you really, when you notice something, instead of just notice it and zoom by, because biking allows you to zoom by things, um, is to just stop. Like sometimes, you know, when you see the light, the, the, the rays coming through the sky, and you think, oh, well, that looks like heaven above. And so to, to really stop and really, really cherish that. Because I spent a lot of time in my 20s and 30s and 40s rushing through life. And, and even though I, I noticed these things and I, I, um, I experienced them, I didn't install them. My name is Cindy Devine. I'm a former world mountain bike champion and I'm a registered physical therapist. I started cycling from Ruskin, BC, which is between Maple Ridge and Mission, BC, which is where I spent my adolescent years. And I got that bicycle that your parents say, you pay half and, you know, we'll pay half and you can get your bikes. So I got that. It was called a Chimo back then. I don't even know who made it. It was a 10-speed. And I would bike from that area to English Bay on the freeway. So that just, it was an escape really from a, a disruptive family life and it was a sense of freedom that cycling gives you of just getting on something and going and covering a lot of distance. And I just stumbled into a mountain bike in 1987 when I was touring New Zealand and it was one of the first mountain bikes and I thought how wonderful it was to be able to ride a bike and be off the road and in nature. When I went back to Whistler, I realized there was a few other people riding these bikes, and most of them originated from North Van. So they were North Vanners who lived in Whistler and who were starting to ride off-road. And I fell into that niche, which was totally supportive and taught me everything I knew. And uh, then I stumbled into a fellow who became my husband and got me into mountain bike racing. I keep forgetting, they, they, they always remind me that I was the very, very first world champion because the women's race is before the men's and the downhill is before the cross country. The downhill course was a seven and a half minute downhill, which was a really long course. Typically now, there may be four to six minutes. So this was a really long downhill at really high altitude. And she came down, I think it was 7.30 was the time and I was, like 0.34 seconds behind her, so it was right down to the wire. Maybe I'd catch up to her and she'd, oh my God, it's you, and we'd try to drop each other. And at the finish line, I remember just this, when I came through the line and you know, the announcer before they say, and Cindy takes the win, and I could remember her just being so stressed. And me too, obviously, but, and her name is Cindy B. Devine, her middle initial is B. And after that race, there was a little blurb in the Sports Illustrated. And I'll never forget the last sentence in the article. It said, Elodie be fast, but Cindy be divine, <laughs> which was kind of cool. <laughs> now is an era when you learn mountain biking, it's just so much easier because you've got the technology. You've got a nice raked out fork and you know a slack head tube. And when we were doing it, it was the tight head tubes. And anytime you're going steep, you're like right over your bars. It was ridiculous. Nowadays, again, women will do a mountain bike camp, which is what I did for 20 years after retiring, was teaching women all those mountain bike skills about when you're in trouble, hang on to those bars and ride the bike and you know get your body back and all the things they need to learn. Cindy has the mind of an engineer and she's very analytical and uh, so she's a great teacher as well. A lot of people are scared, you know, that they're going to hurt themselves and by going to these, uh, say a two-day camp, your skills just skyrocket. Knowing that girls are capable of, of doing that, knowing that there are females out there that have super strong mental ability and strength to get themselves to pass that level of fear um, to me was really important. I quite often tell women that when you're looking at stuff on a mountain bike, break it down. I can do that, it's easy. I want to be able to do that, it's pretty challenging. 
this is where I'm going, that 20 foot drop, I don't ever want to do that. So you don't have to look at the 20 foot drop and think, I suck because I can't do a 20 foot drop. You can look at the girls that are doing that and, and admire them. Um, and then you can figure out how you're going to get to the five foot drop. Cindy would admit that in some ways she pushed too hard emotionally on herself, mentally was maybe too hard on herself. Um, she has a really high expectation of herself, especially when she was racing. And I think now post racing, there's more of a, more insight, I think, into, you know, what drove her to be that focused to the extent where maybe it was even unhealthy at times for her, you know, and what that drive, that competition drive and where that comes from. So I think she's really done a lot of work to explore that side of herself. And that's kind of the neat thing about competition is it does teach you a lot about yourself. and. You know, you get into some pretty high stress situations, so it's interesting to see what you do with that. She knows herself very, very well, and she spent a very long time uh, understanding who she is. And one thing I really respect about Cindy is I know when I talk to her, I get, I get a solid answer, I get an honest answer. If it's not going to work for her, she lets you know. And to have that much control and understanding of, of what you need to keep yourself happy is so admirable. A lot of people, I think, find that a little intimidating. Um, but she's just such a softie. And it's so fun to be around her because she has this innocence that I think has, since she stopped racing, she's cultivated a lot more of herself as a result. I think she put a lot of emphasis into doing other stuff and being a physio and being a pro athlete. and. Now she's got a really cool inner journey going on that's just bringing out the best in her. So she's definitely maximized and continues to maximize her physical ability. But I think the coolest thing about where Cindy's at now is that she's really doing a lot of internal traveling and you can really, she's just a wonderful person to be around more than ever. I mean, she's always been a, dear friend, but every time I see her, I see like a new petal that's unraveled in her and it's, it's really cool. I've given some thought to what it is that draws me to nature and always has from being a young kid. I've always found nature even more supportive than, than uh, friends. And, and I think that it's because nature is ever accepting. There are times when you find yourself in nature and you're mumbling away to yourself and you're, you're working through a struggle that you may have. But it is nice if you can take that time to be with nature and to just let go of your thoughts and your troubles and just experience and look and smell and hear and listen and pause and install those moments. So it does give you both. You can just be totally inattentive and in this other world of whatever you're struggling through and it will accept you or you can be calmed and centered and let go of everything and just be with nature as it is. So it, it accepts it no matter what. That's the one cool thing about mountain biking is it's, it's kind of a spiritual experience that way that it, you're all one, you know, your mind, body, soul is an opportunity for everything to merge and come together for that flow. And BC puts the mountain in mountain biking, really. You have endless amount of hour to two hour long descents that you can do in the most beautiful places along the most incredible ridges with the most beautiful views and not a lot of people around really. I mean, you can work your way into the interior and it's kind of like going back in time 20 years. And I think people, the busier our world becomes, the more inundated we become with media and advertising and devices. And it's just that opportunity to just get away from all of that stuff and kind of get back to nature and being in a place like BC. It's you're here because it's really the most beautiful place in the world. And what better way to see it than on a mountain bike? It's access to nature and a lot of sites in a short period of time. So that what we can cover in an hour here around Rosland is huge. So I think it's just that memory of really falling into your your place that you, you just naturally, your body has learned after how many thousand kilometers have my legs spun. Once your legs have a memory of pedaling circles, they never forget it.
My name is Matea. I'm 12 years old and I live in Tofino. I always need to get in the water because that gives me time to think. When I'm sitting out in the water, there's like all these beautiful things around you and like the world around you is so pristine and so vibrant and colorful and it's like the world how it was before humans got on it. I love the ocean and I like being out there. She has this pull to the ocean that I don't even know I understand, like her need to be in the water. And her daily, like when she started surfing, it was this daily need, like, Mom, I have to surf today. Mom, I have to surf today. It was no surprise that she immediately, you know, could figure it out. And it didn't take her long to really just start riding down the face of the waves. The first time I coached her, she was just turning 10, I think. And just the very first wave I saw her paddle into, real gracefully stand up and just ride the wave so well. I haven't seen too many, you know, nine, ten-year-old kids do that before. I knew right away that she was um, going to be amazing. She's an inspiration in every sense of the word. I mean, she's inspiring an older generation of surfers um, to kind of step up our game because she's right on our heels. She's just really setting the bar high uh, for all the female surfers in this area, but also the guys too. So, the next big group of kids—they're sort of, you know, three to five years younger than her and they all look up to her. They see her doing this, doing so well, competing with the, with the adults, and they all want to do that. You know, they see Matea and they want to be like Matea. She said so many times, Mom, I want to inspire people. I want to inspire people to be the best they can be. And I feel like there's no better young girl to just be such an inspiration. People just magnetize towards her. She just captivated people everywhere. People would always be like, who's that girl? Who's that girl in the water? She's just amazing for me to watch. I like surfing with Matea because it's really fun and um, it really improves my surfing a lot. I love surfing with her because she's really fun to surf with and to help her learn how to do better. I really like teaching her the stuff that I've learned over my life. Sonoa is almost the exact opposite on the outside of Matea. Like she's so vocal, so chatty. She just seems like she's going 100 mile an hour all the time. Like you would have no idea that she's actually really focused. But she's got the advantage of having the big sister who's already making a name for herself and already doing so well out in the water to look up to and be inspired by. Matea Sanoa is the greatest inspiration, but um, Sanoa keeps the fire lit under Matea because she also wants to, she really aspires to catch her bigger sister. So it's this beautiful dynamic of inspiration and competition. It's just beautiful to see. When you're looking for a good spot to go surfing, you're really looking for a really consistent peak. And a peak is basically a wave. And the first part that breaks and turns into white water is called the peak. And that's where you want to be taking off. I love just to have a competition that will push me out and I love being out there with like only three other girls and having this one peak. She's got this deep, deep personality and within it she strives for perfection. So when she um, first told me she wanted to compete in surfing, it didn't come as a surprise because she just, everything she does she really wants to excel at. And, and to see that fire, I didn't realize how seriously she took it until she started competing. Shannon always calls me like I'm really timid and shy on the outside, but then like in the inside I like have this aggression. I mean she's kind of got the eye of the tiger. She's got so much focus, you know, when whenever I, I talk to her you can just see that she's listening so deeply and, and she's able to take um, whatever bit of knowledge I give to her and, and paddle out straight away and apply it. She just seems to be able to concentrate all the time when she's out there in the surf. You know, she takes off on a wave and you can, you can see it while she's riding the wave that she's really thinking about what she wants to do on that wave. So I kind of take it back to that eye of the tiger. You know, she really, really wants to become a professional surfer and she's going to. 
the biggest challenge for Matea um, getting onto the world tour is just getting enough contests um, sort of under her belt. Um, so she's just going to need more access to other surf destinations where they are holding contests more frequently, like in California and Hawaii, just to make sure that she's got that competitive edge. Um, but as far as uh, athletic skills go, I think she's got it. It's more so just getting the opportunity to get her out there. Last year we went to California two times and we're planning on doing it five times this year. The whole like circuit's called WSA and every month they have a different comp. And if you do five you can do their championship at Lowers. So I really want to get to go to Lowers and do that comp this year. I remember uh, one of her first uh, competitions, she caught this huge wave. She was 10 years old, um, it was at the Queen's Peak, and she got this wave that was at least double overhead. And when she came in, her mom took her aside and just breathed with her and just got her grounded back to this universe because she was just on a whole different adrenaline plane. And I just thought, wow, that's really special. That's a great way to keep this kid focused, um, you know, in, in the sport um, as, a, as, a, as a true athlete, so. Matea has a good head on her shoulders. You know, she comes from a lovely family. She has access to so many other sports and things out there. Um, so she's a phenomenal, you know, gymnast, a, you know, a yogi. Um, she's an excellent little skier, snowboarder. So um, she's just a really well-rounded athlete. And I think that'll help her go a long way in the sport of surfing itself. I love being out there with my family. It's really fun because you're just like talking and laughing and being with each other and spending quality time. So when you're out there, it's very magical and just to be out there and see like, look around and see like waves and see the water and see like the beautiful trees and everything and see like the sky above you and just looking out on the endless ocean. I love when you get to pedal out and see like everybody on waves and you're like, I can't wait for me to be out there on one of those waves. There's so much energy up there and it's so pretty. I think waves are one of the prettiest things of the world. They're just so simple but beautiful.